I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for watching my videos. This next video is going to be a, a brief video on the function of truth trees. And the purpose of the truth tree is to prevent you from having to do as much work as it would take you to do in constructing a truth table in order to find out whether or not um, the members of a set are consistent or inconsistent. So in discussing um, truth trees, there's at least two things that we need to address uh, briefly. The first thing is a very, very general, very brief discussion of sets. Um, and then the next thing is um, what is a truth tree? How is a truth tree constru uh, constructed? And how is it that we determine uh, consistency or inconsistency within a truth tree? So to begin then, this is the discussion on This is going to be a discussion on truth trees. All right. For example, if we're talking about uh, a set, just generally, a set is going to be characterized by these brackets, and then there will be members within a set. So you can have uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, and so on of a set. There's no repetitions of uh, numbers within a set. You won't have the number one repeat twice. This is one member, this is another, so on and so forth. Um, what we're going to do in the discussion of truth trees is that we'll be looking at sets and we'll be determining whether or not the set is consistent or inconsistent. Um, basically, in discussion of consistency, um, it'll be consistent when we have what is known as an open branch in a, in a truth tree. So, for example, if my truth tree has A here and I'm able to draw... Uh, the conclusion A here, there will be consistency, right? However, let's say, for example, in my truth tree, I have not A here, and I draw the conclusion. So, let me back up first. This would be, uh, this piece right here uh, is known as a branch. This piece is known as the branch, the branch of a tree. The truth tree grows out, and um, this set is called a branch. This is known as a node. So we have the branch, we have the node. This set, or this, uh, this branch of the truth tree, rather, is what's known as an open branch. This is an open branch. Why? Because there's consistency between the claim that A and A. It's tautological, right? It's, um, there's consistency in this branch. However, if I were to if I were to have started with not A and I was able, based on the applications of some rules that I'll tell you in a moment, uh, draw the conclusion A, then you can see there's a discrepancy between A and not A, right? It is inconsistent to make this claim. You cannot make the claim not A and A. Right? That's a contradiction. You can't both be um, six feet tall and not six feet tall at the same time, right? It's impossible for someone to be both six feet tall and not six feet tall at the same time. If I draw this, it's inconsistent, right? So this would be, seeing that I have um, this in my conclusion, what I would do is I would stop this branch of my tree by drawing an X so that I know that this branch of my tree would be closed and I would have to open up another branch of my tree based on the application of some rules and I might have, a, you know, whatever the variable is, A, B, C, actually it wouldn't be A, it'd be like uh, B, C, and so on. So this is the branch, these are nodes. Um, consistency consistency uh, is where the branch continues to open. Inconsistency arrives wherever we have a contradiction in the tree. So that, that's sort of like just the basic, uh, the basic understanding of what the parts of the, branch, uh, the tree are and the function that these parts have. Now with respect to truth trees uh, in general, um, we know that there will be sets and we'll have um, rules that govern how we use, how we distribute the rules to the characters within the set. And we have a basic understanding of what the branches are, but what I want to do now is I want to um, define the rules that govern truth trees. Um, it's just something that you need to commit to memory after you do it a few times you'll understand how to construct these rules. And in knowing how to use these rules, you'll be able to apply 
um, these rules to various sets to see if the set is consistent or inconsistent. So, let's begin. All right, so the first thing that we want to do then is I want to discuss um, truth trees and nine rules for truth trees. So, so truth trees and nine rules for truth trees and, and nine rules. We'll just leave it at that. Truth trees and nine rules. Okay. The first rule of a truth tree is uh, very, very simple. Um, it makes the claim, if we have a double negation, then what we're doing is we're making an affirmation. If I say that I am not, not going to the store, if I'm not going to the store, then you know you're not going to go. But if I say I'm not, not going to the store, well, what I'm actually making is an affirmation. I am going to the store. So anytime we have the claim not, not A, Anytime you have the claim not not A, this is rule number one. Anytime you have the claim not not A, I'm saying A. Very simple. So that's the first rule of truth trees. The second rule pertains to the conjunction. If I have the claim A and B, and I'm going to use this to determine the function of a truth tree, then what I want to do is this rule says that I have A and I have B. And it's written vertically like, like this. What this is saying is that A is true and that B is also true. And we know from our truth table um, that we constructed before that in order for uh, the statement and statement logic to be true as such, then both of these need to be true. If any of these are false, then this whole thing becomes false. So both A and B are true, and that's the second rule. So the first rule is that not not becomes A. The second rule is that A and B is written vertically, and it says that A is true and that B is true. The third rule is the following. The third rule is that says, well, if we have a disjunction, remember the disjunction is written with the, with the V. If we have A or B, then how do we make sense of this? Well, we create a branch. Remember, we said that these are branches. This is a branch. We create a branch, and we said that either one of these that need to be true. Remember, in a few lectures uh, ago, I said that in constructing a truth, tra a truth table for a disjunct, just one of these variables need to be true, right? Either A can be true, or B can be true. Um, but at least one needs to be true in order for the statement and statement logic to be true. So, um, from this branch, I can see that I can turn this, A or B, into this, A or B. And again, me writing this is suggesting that this is true or this is true. Me writing this is suggesting that this is true and this is true. Okay, so we see that we've formulated a branch. We've used a branch now. Um, number four is the conditional. If I have the claim A, if A happens, then B happens, right? If I have the claim, if A happens, then B happens, then the way that this is written is I create two branches on my truth tree, and this, just memorize it, becomes not A, right? It becomes not A and B. So, this is going to say, anytime I have in my statement, uh, not in my statement, sorry, in my set, um, something that looks like this, right? A, if A happens, then B happens. Then what I need to do while I grow my tree, while my tree is growing, and that's sort of a technical term, the tree grows by branches. So when my tree is growing, I need to make sure that whatever this is represented as, I have its negation and then I assume the same with respect to the truth of uh, uh, um, this variable, right? So if my um, antecedent is A, then this needs to be not A. If my consequence is B, then this needs to be the same. That's, that's, these are just rules. You just commit it to memory. We haven't actually applied these rules yet. That's what we'll do at the end uh, of this discussion. Okay, 